So, how would you like to start this? So, this is the book I wrote. It's a real book. It has pages. It even has pictures every now and then. Uh, demonstrating the concept. This is a this is a game played on a, a hopscotch. So the idea of Jack and Sports was uh, is to um, uh, when, when I was working with the do you know about new games the new games foundation and the new games festivals. I don't think that everyone knows about it. So. Okay. Uh, back in the 1970s, mm -hmm. was anybody here born in the 70s by any chance? Just him? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I missed it by 10 years. <laughs> oh, I'm such an old man. <laughs> I'm so old. I don't know if I can stay much. <laughs> Anyhow, anyhow, back in the 1970s, there was a, uh, a group uh, that was started by a man named Stuart Brand, who uh, his whole idea was what we wound up calling the New Games Foundation. Uh, and we had very large scale events for thousands and thousands of people, really thousands of people. And we invited them to come and play a whole bunch of games where the whole idea of the games was to have fun and to play uh, and not really worry about winning or losing or keeping the score or so much what the rules were. Um, and we played them with a spirit that really helped people feel very open and playful. So, for example, one typical game we played was a, a game of... Um, uh, tug of war, you know, tug of war, where you and we had we had a very thick rope that was maybe 200, 300 meters long, and we had people at either end, and there was a, a pit in the middle with mud in it, and we were pulling pulling each other across it. So you imagine all these people playing tug of war, people of all ages, you know, they were like little kids and big people and. And whenever, whenever one team was too close to winning, the people on the back of the, of, the, of the rope would go over to the other side and start pulling the other way. Because it was more fun to play than it was to win. You, you understand? And that, was, that, that happened spontaneously because it was the spirit, the spirit of the game was like that. We were all... It was an invitation to play together, and and it was strangers and, and people that we just happened to be in the park at the time, and there were lots and lots of games. We played, uh, we had a, a giant ball that was um, another three meters in diameter, giant, no, maybe, no, maybe two meters in diameter, uh, but big, and we used to play, uh, and it was, we painted the, uh, the, the planet, the picture of the Earth, and so when people lifted it, it was like they were lifting, holding the earth in their hands. You understand? Yeah. And, and then we would play a game like volleyball, trying to throw the earth across the net. And it was so hard to do that, that whenever somebody actually did it, everybody applauded. <laughs> <laughs> it was so difficult. And so the game was more about, again, everything we did was more about playing and it was about uh, keeping score, trying to win. And there were lots and lots of games. If you ever have a chance, on my website, Deep Fun, I write a lot about the New Games Foundation. Anyway, there, one of the things that we try to do in the New Games Foundation is to help people make up new games of their own. Uh, and, and we felt it was very important, not only that they could play our games, but they felt that they could make up games easily and freely. And um, it turned out to be a lot harder than we thought. We, we had a good feeling for the games, but, but it was, it's, I guess it's 
start making the game or is threatening. I don't know what happened, but it was very difficult. So I try. I look for a way that we could easily teach people so they could make up games of their own. Are you with me so far? Is this getting boring to you? I can stop any minute now. <laughs> <laughs> so that was the so the whole idea of junkyard sports was to help people find a way to make up games by themselves. So so we started with sports because everybody knows sports. If you say you say volleyball, if you say football, if you say soccer, everybody knows what you're talking about. Well, maybe not soccer, but football they do. Okay, so. So then you say, okay, so the next step is if you try to play soccer, only play it with, or football, try to play football, only play it with a very large ball. Well, as soon as you try to play football with a large ball, you have to change the rules, right? Yeah. Uh, and and that, was, that was the whole idea. You tell people the sport, because people understand what the sport's like, understand how to keep score and what's wrong and what's right with the game. And then if you give them something that's not supposed to be there, that they're not, you know, they're not supposed to use, instead of a ball, you can give them, oh, I don't know, um, uh, a cardboard tube or, or a balloon or maybe even better, like a balloon full of water or, um, or just a paper wad or a plastic bag. And they would have to change the rules. Or you would say, let's play with three teams instead of two. So you could make, take a sport, because everybody understood it, change a rule or two, change the object that they were playing with, and it became very easy to make new games. Now, why was it important? Because when you're playing a new game, there is no expertise. Everybody starts out equal. And because there's no expertise, you can really create a kind of play community where the whole focus is on having fun together. Because nobody's good at playing how to play uh, football with, a, with a, a plastic bag. You know, there's no champions. You don't see any big tournaments of plastic bag football going on in the, you know. So, so that was the idea. And Junkyard Sports is really just a whole uh, exploration of how to do that. Uh, in many different sports. Now, the one that I sent you uh, in the post that I wrote today, if you happen to see it, is a, a, one of the just one example of junkyard sports. And I thought we could try to play it today, just to give you a taste of what it's all about. And I'm going to give you kind of the start of it, and then you have to you and then you'll you'll just go on with it, and I'll watch and laugh at you. <laughs> <laughs> as much as you want to, as much as you want, if you like the idea, you know, we'll try something else. So the way the way that we like to do this, the way that this is the my recommendation of how to do it. First, um, we have what two? Let's, if we can get into two groups, each group sitting around the table. Yes. So if you want to put all the stuff that's in your pockets on the table, and. Uh, Whatever you want to share, if it's special things you don't have to share. I have a bunch of junk that you brought with us, though. Well, well, I wanted to set up. We can use that later okay. if you don't mind. I mean, I, I, I just the reason why why I wanted to share this with you this way is because that way, you know, people always have stuff in their pockets or a purse, or so you don't even have to bring junk to get them started because they already have junk with them. You understand? Say yes, I understand, or no, I don't understand. Which one? Yes, yes. Okay, good. So now each each team each team ha has okay. What are the, what are some of the games that they, they the events that they play at the Olympics? What are the Olympic events? So you have. Uh, They have high jumping, yes, that's good. Go ahead. Uh, 
Oh, yeah, the javelin oh, throw. Throwing the javelin throw, yes. Okay. Uh, what else? A football? Football? No, not back in the day. I'm talking about now. Uh, they have gymnastics is good. They have um, what else? Archery. Archery. Uh, oh, what about uh, in the the? Uh, 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 yes, uh, weightlifting. Uh, uh, in the in the uh, the Winter Olympics, what about the Winter Olympics? What do they have? Skiing. Um, oh, the so, uh, do we get any more? Oh, I know. You know the slalom. Slalom race where you go around, you have to ski downhill and go around everything. You know. Yes, slalom. How do you say slalom? What is it called? Slalom. Yeah. So you go down the thing. Okay. So the idea is that each table is going to make up its own event, its own event that you can play on top of the table. All, only with the stuff that you have. You got, you got me? Only with the things that you, only the jump that you brought. It could be any any event that you could play, imagine playing at the Olympics, so you can make up your own. It has to have, it has to have some way of scoring it, so you know when somebody is better than somebody else. Okay? So, like in a slalom, it would be, I guess how fast you can go without knocking anything over, or how many things you knock over in a uh, javelin throw. Now, if you, if it's a javelin throw and you're playing on the table, it would be like a you would be throwing maybe what a pencil or something like that. Yeah, you got the idea. So, so in the next uh, now. You can you can get really carried away with it. We had people make up their own language. We started with a parade, and they did this whole. They made flags, and they were and they they you know they sang Olympic songs, and they were you know and you can get very serious about it. But this is just like a little practice session. So so the next fifteen minutes or so, I'll stop you if, if it's if I think it's time. See if you can make up a good event, and it's going to happen after you've made up the event. Is the two teams that your table is going to compete against uh, uh, to to try to do the other table's event and to try to do it in the, in the best or something? You can make up how to compete. I don't care. Okay, got it. All right. Yeah. Got it. All right. So so how's it going? Yeah, fine. Great. <laughs> so so you have you have your your challenge your game yes your challenge. And you figured out a way to keep more or less. You're not happy with it yet. We have some fine tuning. Some fine tuning. How about the other team? How about you guys? We're super happy. Yes, apparently they're super happy. That's what they're, they're super happy. That's good. Uh, so I, I, when you when you're ready with it, just let us know, and then we'll have a competition. Okay. So so each so it's you're going to each play against the team that made it. So, so you take turns. First, your team makes it, uh, tries it, then the other team tries it, and whoever scores the higher gets the medal. You might want to figure out some kind of way to award the medal the way they do in the Olympics, you know, with the... Uh, okay, you, you know, some kind of, I don't know, like a, an award ceremony. You can have... The winner stand on a chair, and you can put a thing around his neck, and you can salute him, and and and. and, and yeah. Okay, so that's your that's the next part of the test is to get the game so you can actually compete and see who the winner is. Then make a ceremony, and then we'll play it, and we'll give the winner. Should we say we play in five minutes? 
That gives us five minutes to uh, to for the next Wow. Oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. One. Well, you both go to either side. The team that made the the uh, the challenge shows it, demonstrates it, and they and they show you and they and they then they perform so you can see what their score is. Then you try to score higher than they did. Okay. Better than. <laughs> All right. Is this going to be the official official yeah, competition? Yes. Official moment, yeah. Yes, yes, <laughs> 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 What did you guys think? Um, well, I immediately I remembered when when I was uh, I feel you feel younger definitely. Uh, it was it was super refreshing to to work with uh, with something and, and uh, that that could be abstract and to turn it into something interesting. Uh, in my in my village where like where my kind of ancestors are in a way, they do a lot of games and very elaborate games with sticks. And uh, you, you you can just see like a bunch of people like us like uh, here in like just playing. And behaving very weirdly. If you're not there, you'd be like, "What are they doing? What are these people? They have all kinds of strange rules." And it's just two, three sticks and something like that. So it brought me back to this experience. I love yeah. it. It's, it's very. Uh, I find it very, very refreshing to to do something like this in a time of such digital. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, yeah I, I thought it was very refreshing. Thanks. Excellent. Thank you. Sure, and you can you can see how how you can make it more complex, or easier. You know, you can uh, uh, we play with like actually gathering specific materials for it, so that each team had exactly the same things and they could compete with what they do with them and stuff. It's a it's been very successful for for many years now. This this particular game, and I encourage you to play it more if you like it and, and see what make out of it. I think sure. it's very nice, and it's super nice to see how people treat the material. You know, we treat them, we treated them like cavemen. You know, they were like math and Macron. And, you know, it was so it was very interesting. My favorite uh, uh, making a uh, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, cool. super cool. And I also, I really enjoyed how you played together. It was a very uh, cooperative. Everybody was helping everybody else make the thing. You know, no, no, there wasn't any rule about being cooperative. In fact, I said it was a competitive game and you were trying to win. But everybody was trying to just make the game work. And uh, it was beautiful watching you. There was I mean, like like the kind of play group that I, that I want to create in, in the world, you know? People playing together and helping each other and focusing on fun and and there was no like anger or, or I'm so much better than anybody else. Nobody really cared about about even though it was competitive, nobody cared about about the competition. Focused on making it work. So it was beautiful watching it. It really, really made me feel delighted to see that. So thank you for giving me the chance. <laughs> What's next? I think we finished for today. Okay. <laughs> but uh, I enjoyed it very much. Yeah, I'm so glad much. you did it. It was nice meeting all of you. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Nice meeting you. Yeah, too. thank you. Thank yeah. you. Do you have any Thanks questions before I go? Uh, any questions? Uh, I don't want to speak on that. No, just go ahead. Go ahead and say it. Uh, no, no. It's just, uh, I mean, I'd like to, to, to see how, uh, how this is done in larger groups. And, 
it was it was very well. You can you know, because there's so much you can play with with the, the singing and the country. So that the it, people are representing their countries, making up their own language, yeah. uh, and people get very very uh, complex as they try to figure out how to make a slalom and a, and, and a jousting and all of the things. So it really works very well. I, I played it. Bless you. You'll see a little video I played uh, in the in the, the my post today, where I played with uh, the Lego um, design des design group. They have a, a yearly conference, so I introduced it to them. And I think we had about fifty people, maybe forty five people in there. It was very successful. So they really got into it. Of course, a lot of them tried to use Lego pieces. So. <laughs> <laughs> it helped a lot, but. Have you tried it with children? Yes, of course. From primary school or? Um, I think the youngest age was about seven. seven. Yeah. And it was okay. Worked fine. Sure. Yeah. As soon as that, you have to you have to work a little bit more closely with them. You know the, the structure of the first you're going to make up the game and then you're going to try and the game has to have a way of winning and a way of losing and you have to be able to measure it uh but they you know they're they're already playing marbles so if they can play marbles they can understand any of this right it's the same kind of kind of concept you know you play you try to score and you know how, you, how many marbles can you hit to I found I find like uh, the this thing that I said like you take something abstract and uh, I was think I was thinking all the time about uh, say synesthesia and like uh, assigning different uh, purpose to a different uh, material yeah. And, uh, yeah you know it's and I'm very interested how you uh, how you kind of came up with the idea and uh, this thing of like because for me it's a lot about transforming and thinking about something from a different angle, you know? And Absolutely. I'm surprised how easily everybody thinks of this as a ball when you put this setting, you know? That's Whereas right. in, in real life it's so hard to like, yeah. no, but look at this, maybe this is a triangle. No, it's not. Well, you know? That was and in the game it's that, like, it's... That was why I... I uh, I call the sports because once you once you get people thinking in terms of a sport, they already know the structure. They know, yeah. okay, we need this and we need that. We have goals, we have balls, we have uh, uh, limits, we have boundaries, we have things that shoot, and things that we aim at. Mm -hmm. So all of that is already set up in their mind. Yeah. So they have, they have models that they can choose from. So they can transform, and the material, because the material doesn't have any uh, clear description of what it is, it doesn't. Yeah. It gets it, it, it responds to however you want to see it very easily. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it looks. It's so what are you going to do next? Are you going to try another game? Or are you going to? Uh, oh yes. <laughs> sure. I yeah. guess we are. Totally. I brought a lot more stuff we could play with. Yeah, me too. <laughs> That's <Awesome. so> strange. <laughs> So if you have a chance to find the book somewhere, I, I don't have it in, in uh, oh, yeah. electronically, so I can't send it to you, but there's lots of ideas in the book that, that uh, you know, if you, if you can find it in the bookstore and just read through it a little bit, you'll get, you know, this, you can, there's so many, you start thinking about a sport and combining two sports, oh, wonderful, wonderful, yeah, that should help. Which year did you publish it? This was published, I think, in 2004. I think. 2005, it says. And in the, in the book, you talk about um, people dressing up also with junk, right? You make, they make like, uh, like kind of uniforms. Kind of sure, thing. absolutely. You can go crazy with it if you want to. Mm -hmm. You know, because they, they get into the spirit of it. What, once, you know how you were all... I mean, there was this time in the other game when you were like going like this and you were dancing and it was just so beautiful and victory was ours and, 
it's, it's a natural impulse because you start thinking about, oh, well, it's the Olympics. I know what they do in the Olympics, and they do things like this. <laughs> have, you, have you heard of the Botswars? Say again? Botswars? Box wars. It's like an uh, Australian uh, event where uh, everyone is uh, dressing up in uh, cardboard. Uh, oh, yes. And they, they do some kind of yeah. uh, fighting. Yeah. It's really fun. It's wonderful. That, yeah, have you done that? No, I just uh, found uh, out about it uh, last week. I yeah. saw a documentary oh, you should, about this guy. Yeah, you should just imitate it. Just try it and make up your own because it's a great it's a great thing. <laughs> next uh, next uh, workshop we should try something. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. But the problem with that is, the, is people get kind of literal with it. They really want to make beautiful things that, that, that really you can fight with. And then, then it, gets, it gets more into how good you are really rather am, than yeah. how much fun it is. So this one, nobody cared how good you were at making the, the models, you know? It could be anything. You could, you could. So you have, to, you have to approach it with the right spirit for it to be All right. Uh, I have mean, a last question. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, sure. Sorry, I was interested. Did you work on, or if you know somebody who did something similar, uh, with, but uh, while using sounds and music, like, because <laughs> I'm kind of, kind of trying to do that now, trying to assign uh, musical uh, elements uh -huh. to games like this, and uh, I was yeah, interested. Uh -huh. Like, do you have? Have you ever worked on some which deal with sound and music? Well, with games per se, I mean, I know that uh, I just did a little um, uh, blog post about the thing called NIME, which is the national. I don't know. It's, it's a. It, they make music, uh, but they're but they're making different instruments, electronic instruments, different sounds, uh, and they also do a thing called loops, which is. I just wrote about it uh, in... in um, I can check it out. Uh, yeah, if you look at Deep Fun, I think it was a post not too long ago. It should have been maybe a couple days ago. I, I'm looking now, and I'll tell you in a second. Uh, yes, it's, it's on the front page. It's the first post on the right-hand side. Okay. But that's, that's not necessarily games. That's just a sample... Okay. So, I think it might, it might be. Skype is being weird again. You know, the, uh, um, my first encounter of using sound with games was when uh, I started working with games for the blind. Oh, yeah. And, and it's wonderful what they're doing there. You know, to make a ball that beeps instead, and you have to try to find the ball and, and actually you can play, they can play uh, a football with it. And I mean, it's amazing what, what, yeah. what you can start activating the senses. So that, that might be a good direction for you to go in because, you know, if you can make um, balls and other things that make sound, then you, you can activate uh, it, both the acoustic and the, and the kinesthetic senses, the body and the... That's, that's I, love, a, I love that you're working on that. That's really important work. So I encourage you strongly. It's very, very important. Cool. Thank, thank, thanks a lot yeah, uh, for the suggestion. Very interesting. Thank you, Bernie. Good. Good. Pleasure, gentlemen, ladies. Okay, well, thank you so much. That was really great. Thank you. Thank you, uh, thank you for inviting me.